In this example, we have a uniform circular motion problem um, that's oriented vertically. So the uniform circular motion doesn't have to be uniform over substantial lengths of time. In fact, the, the speed is changing here, but in that moment in time that we're analyzing at the bottom of the loop, when the riders on this roller coaster are going 15 meters per second, you can still analyze it as circular motion. The trajectory is still circular, and for that moment, the acceleration will be given by v squared over r for this v. There's no problem with that. So let's put our rider at the bottom. And in fact, I think I should explain a little bit what the deal is with asking for normal force. So let's visualize the cart at the bottom. And here's one of the riders on this ride. And there is a seat under their butt, and the seat is pushing up on their butt. And that's the normal force that I'm talking about. So there are other problems where we might use a rock tied to a string, and it's the tension that's providing the center pointing force. In this case, I know I've got a push up on this person and the seat pushing up on them. All right, so let's get into our force analysis, and I can just represent the rider as a little speck. And they have a mass of 65 kilograms. And the force of gravity is pulling down. And I'm going to go ahead and just get an, an approximation on that right now. So that's 637 newtons. Okay, and in this orientation, the normal force must be pushing up. And I want to clarify something real quick. In order to move on a circular path, the acceler acceleration must always point towards the center of curvature. So I know it points up at this point, which means the net force must point up, which means the upward normal force must exceed the downward force of gravity. And that's the thing we're trying to compute. Okay, then I get into my Newton's second law analysis. I'm going to go F net equals M A for this writer. Again, I don't think it's I don't think it's a wise strategy to write down a thing called centripetal force. A centripetal force is any net force that ends up pointing at the center of curvature. So we we just write down Newton's second law, write down all the forces that are involved, and we use an acceleration equal to V squared over R because I know it has to accelerate with that magnitude to be on a circular path at this moment in time. So I made upward positive because I knew that's the direction the acceleration was going to be, and that makes my life easier. So I have N minus mg equals m v squared over r. And I have the radius of curvature, and I have v as 15 meters per second. So I can get a little bit more done symbolically. I added the mg to both sides and factored out the m. Now I can plug in my numbers. And get an approximation on the normal force. And I get 2,099 and a half, I'm just going to call it 2,100 newtons. All right, so things change when the rider gets to the top position. Again, that's 65 kilograms. And of course, the weight is always pulling down. I don't have to write the number for that again. Um, and the normal force, provided the rider is going fast enough, the seat is still pressing uh, perpendicularly up on their butt. So I have a normal force 
like this. The rider's upside down, but they still feel the seat pressing into them. So that is, from the outside perspective, a downward normal force. Now, if this N comes out negative at the, at the end of your calculation, then it means that the it's actually the opposite. It's the shoulder straps holding the person up because they're not going fast enough to stick to just naturally stick to the track as they go through the loop. But in this case, I, I set up the numbers to be a little more intuitive, and N will turn out to be positive, provided we use this coordinate system where the acceleration is, is going to be the positive direction. So I know the acceleration points straight down because it must point to the center of curvature in order for something to move in a circular path. And if I get into my Newton's second law analysis, F net equals MA. Both of my forces are in the positive direction. N plus MG equals MA. And the normal force that the rider feels is going to be M. Oops, I may as well just put in the V squared over R right here. It's going to be M times the quantity V squared over R minus G. So I can see immediately this is when I compare to what I got before that this is going to be smaller. 65, they're only moving 11 meters per second squared now. I mean 11 meters per second. R is 10. So you get 11 squared divided by 10 minus 9.8 all multiplied by 65. And I get a tiny normal force of 150 newtons. So this rider is pretty close to the point where the normal force would go to zero and you're just either held up by your shoulder harnesses or you're starting to fall. Um, so this is the sensation you get of having a, a lower weight than usual when you go through a loop is caused by that reduction in normal force. And this is a pretty radical example because this thing is barely going fast enough to keep you stuck in your seat.